All right, folks, gather around. Today, we're going to tackle this Led Zeppelin tier list, ranking their studio albums from the best to the least best. Let me tell you, nobody knows more about Led Zeppelin than me. Nobody. I'm a huge fan, believe me. Tremendous. You know what, man? I'm a big Zep head, too. I got to admit, that music, it lights a fire inside me, man. It's like a spark that lifts me up. It really does. Led Zeppelin's first album, Led Zeppelin 1. It's incredible, folks. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. It's a fantastic piece of work. You know, it's got some of the best rock songs ever made. I'm talking about good times, bad times, dazed and confused. You know what my favorite is? Communication breakdown. Because that's what I do, folks. I break down communication. I don't need to listen to anyone. I don't need to compromise. And I definitely don't need to apologize. I say what I want and I do what I want. That's why I'm a winner. Whatever you say. So, Trump, are you suggesting an S-tier ranking for the first album? No, no, no. I wouldn't put that first album in the S-tier. I'm thinking more of a B-tier placement, you know? But let me tell you something, folks. Led Zeppelin 1, it's like the appetizer before the main course. It's like the starter salad, the humble beginnings of a rock and roll feast. And let me tell you, I've had the best feast, the best. I know my music. I know my Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin 1 sets the stage for the greatness that follows, like the opening act of the greatest rock show on earth. Led Zeppelin 1 is good. It's solid, but it's not their best work. I'd say it's a C-tier album, no doubt about it. Now, let's talk about their later albums like Physical Graffiti or Houses of the Holy. Those are like blockbuster movies with epic soundscapes that'll blow your mind. Led Zeppelin 1 is just the opening act, man. You know what, Biden? I can see where you're coming from. Led Zeppelin 1 is a strong debut, but it's not their absolute best. Led Zeppelin 1 is B-tier. Look, gentlemen, I respect your opinions, but I still firmly believe that Led Zeppelin 1 deserves an S-tier ranking. It's a defining album for the band and for rock music as a whole. It may not have the same grandeur as their later works, but it's a masterpiece in its own right. Now look, Obama, half of the songs on that album weren't even written by them. Listen, nobody cares about that, Biden. Nobody. The fact is that Jimmy Page and the crew turned those songs into something truly next level and magical. John Paul Jones and John Bonham are the best rhythm section in rock music history. Nobody sings the blues like Robert Plant. Nobody can play like them. Nobody. But it's B-tier, believe me. All right, that sounds fine to me. I disagree, but I guess I'm outnumbered here. B-tier for Led Zeppelin 1. That way we give credit to its significance while acknowledging the greatness of their subsequent albums. What about the next one? Let me tell you, Led Zeppelin the second is like a lightning bolt of pure rock energy. It hits you hard, shakes your soul, and leaves you begging for more. It's not just strong, it's a powerhouse that defines the essence of Led Zeppelin's sound. This album takes everything that made their debut great and cranks it up to 11. It's a force to be reckoned with. Whole lot of love reigns supreme on the album. Sickest intro, the iconic riff that kicks it off, the psychedelic breakdown, it's just undeniably cool. Golly gee willikers, I sure do get goosebumps listening to that guitar solo come in. It really tickles my insides, man. It does something to me. It's magical. I feel good when I listen to Led Zeppelin. I used to spend hours listening to their vinyls. Magic filled the air. Those were good times, man. Led Zeppelin knew how to capture different moods and create timeless anthems. This second album is a testament to their artistry and their ability to connect with fans on a profound level. Every song is a radio hit. That's right, Trump. Led Zeppelin II is like a musical time capsule that takes you back to the golden age of rock. It's a treasure trove of songs that showcase their genius as both musicians and storytellers. Let's not forget the exceptional production quality. They managed to create a grand, immersive sound without compromising any of the individual elements that make their music remarkable. I couldn't agree more, Obama. Led Zeppelin II is without a doubt an A-tier album. It's a classic that solidifies Led Zeppelin's place in rock history. The guitar riffs, the pounding drums, the soaring vocals, it's all there, creating a sonic experience like no other. And Robert Plant's vocals, the sheer musicality is mind-blowing. His ability to scream and hit those high notes is like being witness to a very important spiritual event. Gentlemen, I must say we're nailing this ranking. Led Zeppelin II deserves its place in the A tier. It's a testament to their musical genius and the timeless appeal of their music, like in Ramble On, those lyrics draw inspiration from the mystical realm of Lord of the Rings. They give the song a captivating and otherworldly feel. I really like the Lord of the Rings. Tremendous story, you know? I met the writer of that book, Tolkien. What a guy, let me tell you. Really smart guy. I don't believe that for a second, but whatever. 
I must admit, I went through a phase where I was utterly captivated by the drum solo in Moby Dick. It stands as one of the most extraordinary drum solos of all time. Bonham truly knew how to showcase his skills without overshadowing the essence of the song. Let's throw it in A tier. AA for amazing. We haven't hit the super albums yet, believe it or not. Another win for Led Zeppelin. They truly are rock legends. Damn right, Trump. Zeppelin is the best rock band ever. I met Jimmy, Robert, and John Paul Jones back in 2012 at the Kennedy Center. We were watching Hart perform Stairway to Heaven. Uh, it was a beautiful experience. I think I saw Robert crying. Jason Bonham was on the drums. It was awesome. Okay, what about their third album? Hey, guys, uh, have you ever wondered why Led Zeppelin didn't bother with fancy album names? I mean, seriously, they could have come up with something like um, um, Dream Thunder or uh, Magical Riffs. Well, Joe, let me tell you, Led Zeppelin was on a whole different wavelength. They wanted their music to do the talking, to create a lasting impression without the need for flashy titles. They were rebels in their own right, breaking free from the norms of the music industry. And let's not forget the controversy surrounding that Hindenburg album cover. It raised some eyebrows, but hey, they owned it and turned it into an iconic symbol of their enigmatic allure. You know, folks, Led Zeppelin didn't need to rely on catchy album names like other bands. They were rock gods who didn't have to play by the rules. Their music was so damn good that it didn't matter what the albums were called. Their greatness spoke for itself, plain and simple. All right, folks. Led Zeppelin III, this bad boy, takes you on a wild ride through acoustic wonderlands and folk-infused territories. It's like they said, hey, let's crank up the chill vibes and give the people something unexpected. From the epic immigrant song to the soulful Since I've Been Loving You, and let's not forget the delightful Tangerine, this album is a treasure trove of musical delights. And hey, have you seen that mind-blowing album cover? It's like a magic trick. Spin it, twist it, and watch the images change before your eyes. It's pure wizardry, my friends. Now let's talk tears. While Led Zeppelin III is undeniably awesome, it does have a couple of moments where it loses its footing. That's why I'm parking it at the B tier. But let's not discount the awesomeness it brings to the table. Listen up, folks. Obama just doesn't get it. You see, Mr. Obama just doesn't look into things at a deep level. He doesn't understand. And you see, folks, the deal is, I understand. I understand everything about Led Zeppelin. And let me tell you, Led Zeppelin III, it's a game changer, believe me. A freaking masterpiece. They took rock music, twisted it around, and created something magical. Immigrant song hits you like a sonic punch to the face, while Since I've Been Loving You oozes with soul and passion. And who can resist the foot-stomping goodness of Gallo's Pole? Led Zeppelin III is a sonic journey that'll blow your mind. It's the kind of album that deserves to be placed on a golden pedestal, shining with the glory of an S-tier. Trust me, folks, this one's a winner. All right, let's get real here. Led Zeppelin III is like a hidden gem, man. It's got that acoustic charm mixed with their signature rock sound. Immigrant Song may have given Robert some trouble on stage, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it's a killer track. And don't even get me started on Since I've Been Loving You. That's a top-tier blues track, my friends. Led Zeppelin III is the album where they spread their wings and experimented with new sounds, man. It's a game changer. I'd personally put it in the A-tier. It's got that special something that sets it apart from the rest. Man, don't get me wrong. I definitely fuck with this album. Led Zeppelin III is like a hidden treasure chest of musical gems. That album takes you on a journey, especially with tracks like Since I've Been Loving You. The way Jimmy Page's guitar cries in that song, it's like pure magic. You can feel the emotion pouring out of every note. Led Zeppelin III may have its imperfections, but it's still a damn fine piece of art. It's a bluesy masterpiece that deserves recognition for its raw energy and soulful performances. It's got this one song, That's the Way, that hits you right in the feels. The acoustic guitar, the heartfelt lyrics, and Robert Plant's mesmerizing vocals. It's musical magic, folks. Led Zeppelin III may have its detractors, but it's a damn fine album that deserves some serious recognition. It deserves a spot in the S tier where the legends reside. Now, let's be clear. I hold immense respect for their virtuosic musicianship, and there's no denying the allure of that's the way. However, we must confront the album's shortcomings. Led Zeppelin III embarked on a distinct path, 
incorporating more acoustic and folk elements. While it certainly showcases their versatility, it didn't resonate with everyone. Some fans anticipated a heavier sound and were left disheartened. Hence, I believe it settles comfortably in the B tier for me, although I would be open to a haggle for A tier. Let me tell you folks, Led Zeppelin III has some real hidden gems. Friends is like a secret treasure waiting to be discovered. It's a track that showcases the band's willingness to explore different musical styles. But let's face it, it doesn't quite hit the same heights as their all-time classics. My fellow Americans, let me tell you, nobody appreciates Led Zeppelin like I do. I have tremendous respect for Led Zeppelin III. Tremendous respect. It's like a beautiful piece of chocolate cake, believe me. Some people may say it veered from their previous sound, but you know what? Sometimes you got to shake things up, just like I did in politics. I took risks, explored uncharted territories, and delivered tremendous results, just like Led Zeppelin did with this album. It's tremendous, folks. Now, I won't settle for anything less than S tier, but if we have to compromise, let it be known that since I've been loving you is an undisputed masterpiece. Absolutely tremendous. All right, Trump, I feel you, I get you. Led Zeppelin three kicks ass, I agree. It solidifies a strong foundation in the A tier, like the foundation of the Affordable Care Act. So here's the deal. A tier seems fair, my friends. It's a compromise, just like finding common ground in politics. Let's give credit where credit is due and groove on to brawn your R stomp, like we're having a White House jam session. Fine, I mean, all Led Zeppelin albums are S tier, but whatever. Let's just move on to the next one. I'm super excited. On to the real heavyweight. Led Zeppelin 4, this bad boy right here, it's like the yes we can of rock and roll. And you know what's in it? Stairway to Heaven. Some argue it's the quintessential rock and roll composition like the Obama Hope poster of music. This album gave hope for rock and roll and hope for all of us. We're talking epic guitar solos, mesmerizing lyrics, and grooves that can make even Congress dance. Led Zeppelin 4, folks. Let me tell you, it's tremendous. It's a tremendous album, believe me. Some people, and they're wrong, totally wrong, but some people say it belongs in the B tier. Can you believe that? They think Stairway to Heaven is overplayed. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. B tier, no, 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 that's not enough. Led Zeppelin four. it's an exceptional album, an absolute masterpiece. It's like the Taj Mahal of rock and roll. So let's not settle for anything less than the S tier because that's where it truly belongs without a shadow of a doubt. It's huge, it's tremendous. Led Zeppelin IV, ladies and gentlemen, trust me folks, it's fantastic, S tier. Donald, my dear friend, you're absolutely right. Led Zeppelin IV, it's a big deal. It represents one of the paramount achievements in rock music, just like the passage of the American Rescue Plan. From the timeless anthems of Black Dog and Rock and Roll to the thunderous power of When the Levee Breaks, each track truly slays. It's the heartbeat of rock and roll, folks. So let's give Led Zeppelin IV the recognition it deserves, just like we're building back better. Absolutely, my friend. Led Zeppelin IV, it's a true gem. It unquestionably merits its place in the S tier, like receiving the Nobel Peace Prize for music. And let me tell you, Stairway to Heaven, it's like the bridge to unity, man. It transcends musical boundaries, just like my message of hope and change. But it's not just about that iconic song. No, no, no. The entire album is a masterpiece. It flawlessly amalgamates hard rock, blues, and folk elements, like bringing different communities together. It's an impeccable sonic tapestry, like a beautifully woven Yes We Can banner. Let me tell you, Led Zeppelin IV, it's tremendous talent on display. I mean, folks, Jimmy Page's guitar wizardry, it's like watching a master builder construct the most beautiful skyscraper you've ever seen. It's mind-blowing, believe me. And John Bonham's drumming, oh boy, it's the stuff of legends. It's like the beating heart of America, strong and powerful. So let's give credit where credit is due, my friends. It's a showcase of pure talent like my tremendous business empire. We're talking top-notch, folks. And the production quality, it's unparalleled. It's like a finely crafted legislation with precision and finesse. It serves as a blueprint for how to craft a rock album that hits all the right notes. Every track, it's meticulously arranged like a well-executed policy agenda. It showcases the band's musical genius, just like my team showcased the brilliance of the Affordable Care Act. Led Zeppelin IV, it's a testament to what can be achieved when talent meets vision. Let me tell you, folks, what's really intriguing about Led Zeppelin IV is the album cover. 
It's tremendous. It exudes an air of mystery and captivation, just like the official Donald Trump brand. You've got this simple image of a man carrying a bundle of sticks, and believe me, it holds profound symbolism. It's like a hidden message, a secret code that only the greatest minds can decipher. And let's not forget about the hermit tarot card inside, adding that cool factor like the best dealmaker in town. Led Zeppelin IV, it's not just about the music, it's about the whole package, like a Trump Tower of rock albums. The Led Zeppelin IV album cover, it's undeniably distinctive, just like the diversity of America. The portrayal of the stick-carrying figure, it has sparked diverse interpretations throughout the years. Some see biblical references, others delve into ancient mythology. It's like a Rorschach test, inviting personal perspectives and meanings, just like my approach to policy. And let's not forget the Hermit Tarot card, adding that extra layer of intrigue. Some suggest it symbolizes Jimmy Page and his unique perspective on life, like a seasoned politician navigating the complexities of the world. The inclusion of the Hermit card in the Led Zeppelin IV album art holds a significant connection to Jimmy Page, the band's lead guitarist and creative genius. It aligns perfectly with his fascination for hidden knowledge and esoteric wisdom, just like my fascination with uncovering the truth. We're talking about a man who acquired Alistair Crowley's former residence in Scotland and amassed an extensive collection of occult and mystical literature. It's like he's on a personal quest for enlightenment, just like how I pursued progress and justice during my presidency. The Hermit Tarot art, it serves as a powerful symbol, reflecting both the band's artistic vision and the profound themes present in their music, just like my speeches filled with hope and inspiration. We can't overlook the Battle of Evermore. That song, it's a shining example of Led Zeppelin's willingness to explore new territories, just like how I explored new business ventures. They delivered something truly unique, like my groundbreaking presidency. The ethereal blending of Robert Plant and Sandy Denny's voices, it creates a magical experience, like witnessing a Trump rally. It's like being transported into the pages of a Lord of the Rings novel, where I would definitely be the hero, believe me. The Battle of Evermore, it's a really exceptional song, no doubt, just like my exceptional leadership. The mandolin on The Battle of Evermore, it adds this extra layer of mystical vibes like the enchantment of a Biden campaign event. And let me tell you, going to California, it's a stunningly beautiful and heartfelt composition, just like the promises I made during my campaign. It reveals Led Zeppelin's softer side, and it showcases their remarkable musical versatility, just like how I aim to bring people together from all walks of life. It's like a harmonious symphony of unity and hope, my friends. All right, it goes into S tier. All right, folks, buckle up because we're about to embark on a journey into greatness. Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy, my personal favorite. It is a masterpiece that deserves nothing less than an automatic S tier, no debate. The sheer brilliance of this album, it's like witnessing a historic moment in time, just like my presidency. Easiest fucking S tier of my life. Houses of the Holy is like a Trump golf course, folks. It's pristine, it's luxurious, it's perfect, it's a winner. Gosh, this is a real great album. Look, I've got to tell you, I know everything about Houses of the Holy. It's a tremendous album, believe me. It's not just a good album, it's a very beautiful album. Probably the best album ever made by Led Zeppelin, maybe even by anyone. Nobody else can make music like this. Nobody, just listen to the song Remains the Same or Over the Hills and Far Away. They're incredible songs. Very powerful songs. Nobody can sing like Robert Plant, nobody. And Jimmy Page, he's a tremendous guitar player, very talented, very smart. The way he plays, it's like magic. Houses of the Holy is an S-tier album. And let me tell you, anyone who disagrees, they're just fake news. They don't know what they're talking about. Absolutely, my friends. I'm glad we all agree on this one. No Quarter and The Rain Song. They are musical masterpieces that transport us to another dimension. Led Zeppelin's stunning musical vision and craftsmanship shine through in every note. Houses of the Holy takes us on a captivating journey, exploring different sounds and evoking powerful emotions, just like how my speeches captivated the nation. It is a testament to Led Zeppelin's legacy as one of the greatest bands of all time, just like my presidency will be remembered as one of the greatest. Tracks like Jamaica and Dancing Days, they're incredibly catchy. They have this irresistible groove that just makes you want to get up and dance, just like I did when I won the election. 
No Quarter is an extraordinary song that exemplifies Led Zeppelin's immense creativity and innovation. It's mesmerizing, creating a dark and mysterious atmosphere. No Quarter is unquestionably a top-tier song that reflects Led Zeppelin's peak musical vision and craftsmanship. Well, I always wondered, how come the song that's called Houses of the Holy isn't on the album of the same name? What's with that? Well, Biden, nobody knows the answer to that. It's just one of those life mysteries that will never be solved. You know, the thing about Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy album is that it's a work of pure genius, folks. I'll tell you this straight. Houses of the Holy, the song, despite its mesmerizing energy and soulful vibe, didn't make the cut for the album titled Houses of the Holy. Now, why is that? Well, it's all about the artistic vision, my friends. Led Zeppelin, in their infinite wisdom, made the tough call to leave it off the album. And you know what? Sometimes tough calls have to be made. It's all about creating a cohesive musical experience, and they wanted the album to have a specific flow and feel. So while we can uh, still enjoy the incredible song, Houses of the Holy, we have to appreciate the magic of the album as a whole, even if that means some fantastic tracks don't make it onto the final masterpiece. That's just the way the rock and roll cookie crumbles, my friends. Very interesting. What a great band, man. All right, we're done with the best albums. Now, let's move on to physical graffiti. Personally, I, I find it a bit overrated. It's a lengthy album, and I feel it could have been more concise. Uh, I'm thinking C-tier for this one. No way, Biden. Are you kidding me? Physical graffiti is S-tier. It's arguably the best album Led Zeppelin ever made. Oh, Barack, Barack, I respect your opinion, but I have to disagree on this one. Physical graffiti is like that really long speech that keeps going and going, and you're just waiting for it to end. Sure, it has a couple of good tracks, but the rest is just filler material. I prefer their more focused albums. It doesn't have the unity and quality of their earlier albums. Songs like Trampled Underfoot and Sick Again just leave me cold compared to their earlier hits. It's an okay album, but not a great one. But hey, to each their own, right? Joe, you're not seeing the big picture here. Physical Graffiti is a huge album that reflects Led Zeppelin's growth as musicians. It's full of complex guitar playing, lively beats, and smart words. The variety of genres and emotions on this album is awesome. It's a music adventure that deserves to be discovered and enjoyed. That's why it's the best album for me. Oh, for crying out loud, let's talk about this Physical Graffiti thing. I mean, come on, it's like a marathon of music all jumbled up. Led Zeppelin had some epic moments in their earlier albums, but this one feels like they threw everything in the kitchen sink, you know? It's a mishmash of ideas without a clear roadmap. It's not like it's the worst thing ever, but it ain't their shining glory either. That's just how I see it, my friend. Look, Biden, let me tell you something, okay? Physical graffiti, it's tremendous, believe me. It's one of the greatest albums ever made. Nobody else can even come close. Not even me, and you know I've done some amazing things, right? But this album, folks, it's something else. Now, let's talk about the second disc. Oh, boy, it's fucking incredible. Some of the best songs you'll ever hear. I guarantee you that. In the Light, Braun Urar, Down by the Seaside. Just beautiful, powerful, and smart songs. And let me tell you, the guitar playing by Jimmy Page, a genius, folks, a genius. He's a very good friend of mine, very good. He likes me, thinks I did a tremendous job as president, said it to my face. I like him, too. Great guy, really great, really nice guy, tremendous guy, the best Jimmy Page, let me tell you, he has a great sense of humor, the greatest sense of humor anybody has, believe me. He won't get upset for a second about us making this tier list, not even a little mad. He likes me. And just a reminder to you or Jimmy Page or anyone else watching, if you made it this far, remember to click the like button and subscribe to this channel. It would mean the world to me. Anyway, so the second disc of Physical Graffiti, it's top tier, folks, the absolute best. And if anyone disagrees, they're just wrong. They don't know music, Led Zeppelin, or anything at all. Sad. All right, whatever, that settles it. Physical Graffiti goes to S-tier as one of the best Led Zeppelin albums ever produced. No way, guys. I'm using my presidential veto power here. B-tier. No way. You don't know what you're talking about, Biden. It's two votes versus one. According to the Book of the Law, Chapter 420, Section 69, it states... Presidents keep partial veto power after their term is done when it comes to rating music albums. And with me and Obama combined, guess what? We combine our rights into one full double veto that overrides yours. It's the fucking rules, Sleepy Joe. S-tier.
okay, I'll throw you a bone on this. Here's the deal. You got to promise me, man, that no other album gets the honor of S rank. This has to be the pinnacle, the absolute top rank for any Led Zeppelin album. Because let's be real, Houses of the Holy and Led Zeppelin 4, they're in a league of their own. They're untouchable, my friend. So do you feel me? Are we on the same page here? Damn it, Biden. I really want Led Zeppelin 3 at S tier 2, since I've been loving you as the greatest damn blues song ever made. But we can't go back now. We have to move on. And I promise you, there's no more S-tier Zeppelin albums after this one. Believe me. All right, let's dive into presents, my friends. Now, this one's a bit of a puzzle. It's not a bad album. No, sir. It's got some real gems in there. Take Achilles' Last Stand, for example. That's a classic, a true masterpiece. But let's be honest, there are also some real duds on this one, like Candy Store Rock. I mean, come on, it's a joke, a total disaster. So ranking this album is a tough nut to crack. It lacks consistency and cohesiveness. It doesn't quite measure up to their best work. You know what I'm saying? I'd give it a solid B or C grade. I got to be honest, Presence is not that okay. It's not as disastrous as some of their later albums, but it's still far from being a standout. It's a clear indication of their artistic decline, their musical confusion, and their desperate attempts at innovation. They ventured into strange sounds and styles that left both themselves and their fans feeling alienated. The result? Something bland and unexciting. In my book, it deserves a C-tier, to be honest. Wrong once again, sleepyheads. Wrong, very wrong. Look, folks, you gotta listen to what I'm saying. Trust me, nobody understands music better than me. Nobody's listened to Led Zeppelin more times than me. Nobody. And let me tell you, presents... It's tremendous. It's an absolutely tremendous album. One of the best, believe me. It may not quite reach S-tier, but it's right on the edge, right there. It deserves a solid A-tier position, no doubt about it, no doubt. And let me explain why. Let's talk about Achilles' last stand, folks. In Your Life is underrated. Let's talk about Nobody's Fault But Mine. These are some very, very smart songs. Let me tell you, Jimmy Page, he's a winner, folks. Presence is a truly special album, unique in its own right. It's an incredibly tough act to surpass. So while it may not quite reach S-tier, it's certainly on the verge. It's an A-tier album, folks. Believe me. Donald, let's be reasonable for a moment. I must admit, I find it rather difficult to comprehend your suggestion of granting presence an A-tier ranking. It falls short in comparison to the sheer brilliance of Led Zeppelin 1, 2, and 3. The idea itself, my friend, is quite ludicrous. Barack, listen up. you got to pay attention to me. You must listen, because I'm the ultimate expert on Led Zeppelin. Believe me, nobody knows more about them than I do. Nobody. I've extensively studied their music, attended their concerts, and witnessed their incredible talent firsthand. While Presence may not quite measure up to their earlier albums, it still deserves our respect. Presence possesses some truly special qualities that deeply resonate with their fans. It's a testament to their artistic prowess and relentless innovation. Trust me, I have a keen eye for greatness. I've got to tell you, Presence is something special. It's a real game changer. It shows the growth, the maturity of these musicians. They found their stride, their voice, and and it's impressive, folks. It's hard to top their earlier albums, but this one, it's a standout. Plus, let's not forget the toll those relentless tours took on them. They poured their hearts and souls into this album in the midst of burnout, and that's commendable. Let's be crystal clear here. We're talking about Led Zeppelin here, a band that set the bar high from the beginning. Presence has its moments, but it falls slightly short of their earlier brilliance. As music enthusiasts, we can truly appreciate the growth and artistic exploration showcased in Presence. While it may not reach the lofty heights of S-tier, it certainly deserves a solid B-tier ranking. Presence, with its captivating fusion of bluesy rock and emotional depth, occupies a special spot in Led Zeppelin's discography. It might not have garnered the same commercial success as their other albums, but it provides a valuable glimpse into their artistic evolution during a challenging era. Look, I'll be straight with you. When it comes to presence, I have my reservations. It's not that it's a terrible album. No, not by any means. When compared to their earlier masterpieces, it falls significantly short for me. The magic and sheer brilliance that characterize their earlier works just isn't as prominent in presence. It's a mixed bag. It's got its moments of brilliance, no doubt about it. Tracks like Achilles' Last Stand, For Your Life, and Nobody's Fault But Mine showcase their instrumental prowess and raw energy. Still, the album lacks the cohesion and tightness that made their earlier works shine. It feels like they were trying to find their footing, experimenting with different styles, but not quite hitting the mark consistently. 
There are moments that feel disjointed, where the magic just doesn't quite come together. It's like they were searching for their sound, but hadn't fully nailed it yet. Now, I won't deny the impact and significance of this album. Led Zeppelin, despite the challenges and burnout from their relentless touring, still managed to create something unique and powerful. T for One stands out as a hauntingly beautiful blues-infused piece that showcases their emotional depth. And let's give credit where it's due. Robert Plant's vocal performance throughout the record is undeniably stellar. In the grand scheme of things, Presence holds a place in Led Zeppelin's discography. It's a transitional phase, a stepping stone where they were exploring new musical territories. While it may not reach the same heights as their earlier masterpieces, it's still a solid addition to their body of work. So I'm willing to settle on a B-tier ranking for this album, recognizing its role in their evolution as a band, while also recognizing that their work peaked with the previous three releases. Well, gentlemen, it seems we've reached a compromise. While I still maintain my stance that Presence is A-tier, I can agree to place it in the B-tier. There we go. B-tier for Presence. Okay, folks, we've reached the grand finale of our Zeppelin album rankings. Their last legit studio album, In Through the Outdoor. No good. It's not very good. It's bad. Really bad. It's D-tier. Hold your horses. Let's not cast In Through the Outdoor into the damn depths of your D-tier disdain just yet, Donald. Sure, it may not be the powerhouse that some of Zeppelin's earlier albums were, but it's got its own unique flavor, like a funky cocktail of musical experiments that's worth a sip or two. Nah, it's a huge disappointment. It's like serving me a well-done steak with ketchup. Sad. Well, maybe you're just not adventurous enough, Mr. President. This album takes some risks, and yeah, it may not hit the bullseye every time, but it's got its moments. Fool in the Rain is like a catchy tune that refuses to leave your head no matter how hard you try. That song is weak, like the fake news media. I'd rather listen to a speech from Sleepy Joe than suffer through this album again. Oh, come on, Donnie boy. We all know you have a soft spot for catchy tunes deep down. And hey, all my love has that sentimental touch. Even you can appreciate a love song, right? It's not a very good song. I've got better things to do than listen to this crap. It's at the bottom of the pile. A D-tier disaster. Believe me, folks. Well, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, even if it's misguided. But let's not forget, this is still Led Zeppelin we're talking about. Even their weaker albums can't be completely disregarded. So let's give in through the outdoor a little respect, even if it's just a smidgen. Respect? I only respect winners, and this album doesn't make the cut. It's a loser, just like Crooked Hillary. All right, all right, Mr. Trump. Let's agree to disagree. But mark my words, one day you might find yourself tapping your foot to hot dog when nobody's watching. Stranger things have happened. I'm with Barack on this, folks. In Through the Outdoor might not hit you like a freight train of rock and roll energy like their earlier stuff, but let's not toss it in the dumpster of oblivion. Let's give some love to Caris Alhambra, a song that takes you on a wild, mind-bending journey. It's like a roller coaster ride through musical possibilities, and you can't deny the band's willingness to step outside their comfort zone. It's a damn intriguing track that deserves a little respect, even if it doesn't light up the charts like a stadium on fire. All right, folks, let me make this crystal clear. In Through the Outdoor? Trash, plain and simple. It's like a deflated balloon devoid of the power and energy that made Led Zeppelin a force to be reckoned with. This album falls flat, flatter than the hair on Sleepy Joe's head. I can't get behind it no matter how hard I squint my eyes. Donnie, my friend, we appreciate your unique perspective, but let's not be too hasty in dismissing In Through the Outdoor. Led Zeppelin embarked on a journey of artistic exploration, venturing into uncharted musical territories. It may not align with your personal taste, but that doesn't mean it's inherently bad. Sometimes artists need to push the boundaries and take risks to grow and evolve. So let's give credit where credit is due and appreciate the courage it took for Zeppelin to create something different, even if it's not everyone's cup of tea. You got it, Barack. Led Zeppelin was never one to shy away from pushing the boundaries and trying something new. In Through the Outdoor might not have rocked the world like their earlier masterpieces, But hey, they took a bit of a breather and explored a more laid-back vibe. It's like going from a wild party to a a chill evening at home. 
sure, it's tamer in comparison, but there's still something to appreciate in their willingness to mix things up a bit. So let's not dismiss it completely, even if it's not as balls to the wall as their previous albums. Respectfully, folks, I couldn't disagree more. In Through the Outdoor falls flat on its face when compared to the greatness of their earlier albums. It's a downright disappointment, a letdown that doesn't live up to the epic standards that Led Zeppelin set for themselves. It's like promising a luxurious Trump Tower penthouse and delivering a shabby motel room. No, thank you. Not in my book. No doubt there are a few rough edges in this album, and it might not hit you like a lightning bolt of legendary greatness. But let's not forget, it's still a reflection of Led Zeppelin's artistic spirit and their relentless pursuit of new musical horizons. It's like embarking on a daring adventure, even if you stumble upon a few potholes along the way. So let's appreciate the artistic exploration that In Through the Outdoor represents, flaws and all. We have to rank them relative to each other. Remember, it goes into D tier. All right, let's get real here. We're playing the ranking game, but let's not be too harsh. No Zeppelin album deserves to be stuck in the D tier. So I say give In Through the Outdoor a spot in the C tier. It may not soar as high as their greatest hits, but it's not a complete disaster either. Let's give credit where credit's due, folks. Well, even though I may not be the biggest fan of every Zeppelin album, I can't ignore the fact that they consistently churned out top-notch music. They left a huge mark on the music industry, absolutely tremendous influence. Well, that about wraps things up. We are only covering their primary studio albums. Thank you, my friends, for joining in this lively discussion. It's been a pleasure to delve into the artistry and lasting impact of the legendary Led Zeppelin. Their music has the power to ignite passion and connect people from all walks of life. It's a testament to the universal language of music. Led Zeppelin's music has this magical ability to touch people's hearts and souls, bringing them joy, solace, and a rush of pure exhilaration. It's been an absolute pleasure to dive into their extraordinary career and appreciate the everlasting beauty of their songs. Led Zeppelin holds a special place in the hearts of so many music lovers. Their songs have this timeless quality that will continue to captivate audiences for generations. Thanks to both of you for this epic conversation. Now remember to smash that like button and let's crank up the volume, blast some Led Zeppelin and get the lead out. Peace out, presidents. Good night, my fellow Americans. Peace, my friends.